I'm Shamal Lane with this week's Sketch to Scrapbook page and I'm starting here with a rough sketch for two 4 by 6 photos but you could adapt this to any size of photo essentially you just want a block in this part of the page and this week's sketch and I haven't drawn it very well so I'll, I'll try and get it better by the time I put the sketch on the website but the idea is to take one of these sorts of papers which I find a bit more challenging where there's a frame around the edge of the paper and we're going to do a little trick where and um, we cut this into two pieces and put the frame toward the inside of the page so I'll show show that to you and it makes a lot more sense once it's on the layout rather than me just rambling about it so I have two four by six photos and these are of some waterfalls in New Zealand and to go with them I've pulled out just a range of different stickers um, so that's the paper is by Crate Paper. This sticker sheet is also by Crate. Two sticker sheets by um, Seven Gypsies. This one by Studio Calico and some American Craft stickers. And then this set of Brad's from the Lost and Found 2 by My Mind's Eye. So that's where I'm going to start and you're welcome to scrap along with me. To start this technique, you'll need a framed paper, although the design will work just fine with any sort of pattern paper, but I find these kinds of paper are a bit more challenging, so if you do have one like this that's been giving you some trouble, this is something you can try. And the first thing to do is to cut off the branding strip because we won't want that on there. And then the trick to this is that we're going to place the framed edge on the inside of the layout and leave a little bit of frame at the top and bottom. But the problem is, if we do that, then this, you know, it's, it's, they're both 12 inches, so this is going to be offset and it'll be cut off the bottom. So we're actually going to cut this paper into four pieces to start. So the first cut is um, to make one about one third and two thirds. You can do that by measuring or you can just eyeball it. I don't tend to measure as I cut. So then I'd be able to put these two pieces together like this. But now I need to get rid of some of this dimension so that I can place them on the same background paper. And that's where these cuts in the sketch come from. I don't want them to go straight across, I want them to be offset. So we're going to cut the two papers in slightly different places. So here's the missing piece here as well. And see the offset is just, they're not in a straight line. One is higher than the other. It doesn't really matter where on the page it ends up. Now they will go off the edge and that's fine because we want them to go flush to the edge and then we'll trim off the extra. So at this point I'm going to add some brown ink to the edges that are going to show and I'm just adding that and just that's a distress ink in vintage photo but you can use any brown ink that you like. And then I'll adhere these straight to the background and I'm just going to go off one edge of the paper and leave a border on the other side. And you can do this very straight and measure the gaps or you can do them quite wonky and, and not measure at all and, and purposely angle them. It's just whatever style you prefer if you like it neat and orderly or a bit more loose. So those are my four pieces of the frame down onto the background and now I don't have a troublesome frame around the edge. All this lovely pattern is there in the center. So I'm just going to turn the paper over and use either scissors or your paper trimmer to cut off the extra. Once the background pieces are in place and you've chosen the photos and know where they're going to go, there are two options here. You can either leave this gap or you can cover it up and act like the paper was actually this size and it was slightly smaller. And in this case, I am going to cover it up. I'm going to use some border stickers. And I have this one from the Studio Calico sheet. 
And I'm just going to cover that gap and run it right to the edge of the page. And then I'm going to do the same with this strip and I'll just use this sticker. And this isn't the full width but it will go and, until the photo is covered up. So I'm just going to place that over the gap. And then I'm going to add the photos and just stick them straight onto the page. They can have a mat if you prefer, but I quite like them just straight onto the layout. Now, my journaling is going to go up here and um, with a little bit of embellishment up here as well. And then on this, the sketch, you may notice this big circle of dots. And what I want to do there is add um, some small elements in a big circle that will go around the photos. And I don't have any fancy circle templates or anything. I'm going to use something exceedingly high tech. I'm going to use a dinner plate. So I want the circle to go slightly off the page. So what I'll do is cover up the photos with the dinner plate and just have the circle slightly off the edge. And then I'm going to mark um, the circle, not trace around, but just mark dots where I can put gems or brads or anything else. And then I'll go back with a paper piercer to add the holes for the brads. And what I'm going to do is I really like these brads with these lovely rich colors for the epoxy and the pearls. But that will be way too much if I put them all the way around the circle. Plus it would make it one of the most expensive layouts because I'd rather stretch this pack of brads to several projects. So I'm going to mix them in. Most of the dots around the circle will be just plain mini brads in this olive green. And then a few will have something a little bit fancier. So I used plain brads for most of the circle, except then replaced every seventh brad with a jeweled or a rhinestone brad in green as well, just to add a little variety and add this circle shape that's a little different than most of the layouts in my album. And then I'm going to just follow the sketch to finish off the title and the embellishment and add my journaling. I'm using two areas of embellishment on this layout aside from the paper in the circle. Once I added the title, I'm not going to add any further embellishment in this part of the page, but I am going to have this little cluster above the photo and then this section up here where the journaling is going to start on this sticker and if I need more room I'll just write straight onto the paper. And from these I just used those sticker sheets that I started with at the beginning and pulled out different labels and strips and added some smaller stickers up on top. And what I tried to do was bring the colors together so that extra little piece of this border sticker is now up here and I picked out a, a red border sticker to match with this and this has a little bit of red as well to um, pull that across. So even though there's not a lot of embellishment here, there's still that sort of um, balance of a triangle. And if you wanted to have even more embellishment on the layout, this would be the next place I would suggest to start would be around um, that that border piece there. This one goes right off the edge of the page so just like the paper I'm going to trim the excess off and there's one other thing that I want to add in before I add my handwriting and that's these letter stickers. I like how that they how they're a similar color to the pattern paper and I'll be honest when I f first pulled everything out I really wanted brown letter stickers but I've realized lately that once I get a set of brown letter stickers I use them immediately and then I never end up with brown letters that will spell anything. So um, I had this set that I've had quite a while and not spelt anything with it so I went ahead and started with this since it would match 
But now I'm feeling that there, this aqua isn't present enough on the layout. It, it looks a little bit out of place, so I want to add more of it to have it match. And what I'm going to do is, um, throughout this section of my album, I'm just going to put little uh, letters to represent what country we're in. So I'm just going to add an N and a Z letter sticker up here, and um, because this is in New Zealand. And I quite like the excuse to use the Z stickers because... Um, we never use that letter of the alphabet for much, and they always end up left on the sheet of stickers. So I'm just going to start adding them in as embellishments, um, just subtle little things, and maybe sometimes just use tiny little letter stamps and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and add my journaling, and then I will be pretty much finished with this page. So here's my finished page with all the writing finished, and that's it for for my layout this week I hope if you have any of these border papers that kind of give you a little bit of trouble you'll try this idea of maybe flipping them in toward the center of the page and see if it works for you the sketch will be on chamel.com and you have a week to submit your layout and I'll feature a few on the blog next week so I'd love to see what you make with this sketch thanks for watching <music>